the beginning of humanity, we're competing. We compete against the environment, against the animals. We compete all the time. And the reason we compete in sports is because we have rules to prove who is better, who is the best, who prepared better to be in that game. Why you compete? What is the reason who drive you to compete and show that you are the best? Sometimes the circumstances because you learn only that. And other times it's because you really have the passion for that sports. In this session, I will teach you, I will guide you how, why we compete. We compete for several reasons. And we need to make a deep analysis of everything who is involved in why we compete. Number one reason that we compete and we create the competition is to make the people prepare themselves to be disciplined, to have a reason why do the extra work. Usually people just work by covering the needs. Case when you have a need to compete and be the best, you go beyond the limits. That's the reason. But let's go to find out what is your reason. Is to show superiority. Your achievements means a lot for you. You, you want to compare with the others, you need significance, you need a, a lot of approval with the others. You want to have value, add value to your life. Just to have friends, to socialize with other people, you, you develop satisfaction in the moment you compete or in the moment you practice. And to fit in. Most of the young kids in these times, they try to fit in because they assume for the education they have, they're supposed to be accepted for everybody and everybody's fair and all life is equal. And the moment they find out that life is not equal, they start to try to fit in. When you start to compete, you have a dream. But how does that dream start? It's passion, it's love. What is your intention? You start with the kid. What is your goal to have that dream? What is the plan to achieve that goal? What kind of preparation you have available in order to achieve your goal? And what kind of presentation where that dream start? Inside you, in your mind. You start to create, according with your experience, what you see in TV, what you see in videos, you start to create an image of what you can do, what can happen to you in the future. You want to fulfill an intention. You want to have satisfaction about what you're doing. Or like I mentioned before, you want to have an acceptance. Or you can get the shape of that dream. First, to start with your desire. And you need to choose which sport you want to do. Sometimes, you, you like the physical activity, but in the moment you start to see a sport, you start to create the love for that. Practice, preparation. In the moment you start to prepare your body, in that moment you start to get into the game. How many factors play a role inside your dream? No, what is the opportunity? Actions you take, how much talent you have for the family, coaching. Coaching is very important. If you have a very beginner coach, you have less opportunities to succeed because the experience he has are not as good as the other coaches. What do you need to have here? Installations, facilities. How many equipment you have? How many equipment for train yourself in the field, the cross training, conditioning, mental preparation, all that factors are helping you. Now let's go to check the seven factors for achieving your goal. Number one is your attitude. 
what kind of attitude you take towards the practice? There's two attitudes you can take. One as a victim when you are practicing it's too much work and then you think in your mind you're a victim of the excess of the coach or of, of the standards of the group. And the other standard is as a preparation for you to reach a goal. How much consistency you have. You skip a lot of practices. You need to catch up all the time and catch up all the time. You improve but not as fast, not as good as the other guys. How resilient you are. How many setbacks you have in your life, in your career as an athlete. And those setbacks, how strong you are to jump back into the track. How much commitment you have. How you accept yourself. How much you accept the talent you have, the opportunities you have. How fast you recover from the practice and from the experiences you have. And at the end, the certainty. I was going to talk individually about these seven factors. The number one is your attitude. It is your intention. It's your intention. What intention do you have behind everything? And some people are like that. Number two, what goals you set up? You set up too far goals, you give up really fast, especially because you see what you are doing is not getting, getting close to the far goals you get. How much consistency you have doing that. And number three, resilient to, to jump. I want to explain to you what is your number? What I said, what is your number? How many times do you try and try and try and try with no giving up until you get what you want? This is your number for me. As a coach, I want to know what is your number before you decide, before you make the decision, the conclusion that you cannot do it. When I was coaching gymnastics in the beam, I, I put them to do two turns in each beam. One girl was trying over and over and over. Her name is Sarah. She was doing and doing it and doing it. Everybody just do it two or three times and they cannot do it and they jump to the next beam. And they keep going. But Sarah and not. She keep going and keep going and keep going until I ask her, are you okay? She says, yes, I will get it. 27 times in order to do that. When she get one, she tried the second one. Three more attempts and then she did the second one. And then she moved to the next beam. For me, that's your number. If you give up in the first try, in the second try, try to see how many times you need to try before you give up. Number four, how much is your commitment to that? What commitment you have to do that? It's over everything, it has certain conditions, it has certain specifications, your commitment. Number five, accept who you are. Like in this graphic, you, you don't have the body of the jockey. You don't have the body for that sport. You need to accept who you are. You can change reality. You can change it. Some part of the reality, you cannot change it. Number six, how important it is for you to eat and to do everything to keep your health at the highest level. How fast you recover for all those practice. Recovery is the key. It's not how much exercises you do. It's how fast you recover from those exercises you did. Seven, the last one. How much you believe in it? How much in your mind you believe you can achieve that? How much certainty you have? That makes your number higher. That makes everything possible. Doesn't matter, you need to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Now let's go to see the three stages of progress. How you can progress in this sport. The first stage is when you start in the honeymoon. 
probably you remember when you start your sport everything sounds beautiful you will be in the top of the mountain you will be practicing to be an Olympian to be a professional player it's the honeymoon stage but as soon as you start to work everything hurts and you feel stuck the, it's the pain stage it's the process you are doing to make your body strong who is very painful it's very slow and you don't see too much progress and the last one is the harvest stage is when you start to pick it up everything where you did for years and years and years of effort as you remember the peak performance formula is your talent and take away any interference you have any as more interference you have your talent will shine less what are your talents your strength flexibility explosiveness balance coordination agility if you put your attention and strength or you have a, the need to have more strength then you practice strength and then you will increase that or you just put an explosiveness you do that what are the interference in your mind it is the internal ones the internal ones is the mindset what kind of mindset you have to uh, to approach the practices and the competition what beliefs you have values and beliefs is a big role inside your mindset and self-esteem what you represent you are representing yourself you are representing your family your team your country your state you are representing everything inside your self-esteem and the stress you produce inside your mind you produce the stress. The stress is not coming from outside. The stress is the result of the assumptions you do with your mind. What are the external interferences? Number one, the resources. How much resources you can with in order to do what you do? The environment. If the standards of the team you are, if the way you practice are so low, those are interference for you and technical issues if somebody who is coaching you don't have the knowledge to put you up into the high level standards of you own mind that will be an interference it's an external interference those are the interference we have in three categories mental emotional and physical responsibility like we mentioned in the introduction, everything we get in, go out. I want you to do this exercise. Concentrate all your attention using one dot. I don't mention any dot. Any one you want. If you pause it, you want to be sure that this exercise is not manipulated by the camera. Concentrate your attention and do that. And you will see what appears. Past that, what happened with the other dots in the moment you concentrate all your attention in one? I don't want to say you because I want you to do it. It's important for you to do it. It's exactly what happened in the moment you are inside the, the game. Then remember the 30 lessons will help you to achieve everything that you have in your career as an athlete. Now we have an assignment. What is the assignment number one? The assignment number one answers these questions from the right click of a new window in the downloads and you will see a new window with all what you can put into your computer or you can print it. You need to answer this one. What do you want? How do you know when you will have it? If I say I will be an Olympic champion, the only way I can achieve it is when every four years are the Olympic Games and I will be competing in the Olympic Games. If I don't achieve it, I don't achieve it. 
but you need to start with small steps. How this one will affect your life? How your life will be affected for that? How you will affect others around you? It's too much sacrifice. Your family has no enough money. All that kind of things. The other thing is why you don't have it already. Why? What is stopping you to do it? The next one is what resources you can right now in this moment. And what you will need in order to achieve that. You need to write it down. The next one is how you going to get it? What are you going to do? How much sacrifice or how much things you need to do in order to get it? And you need to think. The last question. There's another way to, to get it. Write it down. Two more or three more ways to get it. You need to answer. Put your goal in the top. And you answer. That's the assignment one. The assignment two. You need to put everything here because sometimes your body has certain problems and if you answer all the questions in this questionnaire, you will see it very easy. Assignment three, what is your goal? What are your talents? What are your needs? And what is your intention? This is the flashcards you need to have with you all the time. You need to write it down right there. You need to put with your own hand writing what are your goal, what are your talents, needs, and your intention. The next session, we'll talk about being coachable. I will give you all the instructions how to be coachable. There are to use more efficient time with your coach. So for today, 